Hey, this is Jim Damshutter with Portfolio Think Tank. Today, we're going to walk through portfolio construction using FANG stocks. What are they and what's their impact on the portfolio? Let's go. All right, what are they? Easy enough, FANG is an acronym, and in investments, we love acronyms. This acronym is the first name of several companies, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. We will probably be renaming this given that Facebook has changed its name to Meta, but that is not so important. In any case, these stocks are some of the driving forces in our economy. Most of us use these every day. There's different variations on this. We're going to use one instead of Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google. We're going to use one swapping out Microsoft for Netflix. And as an institutional investor, that has the benefit of putting all five companies in the top 10 of the largest companies traded in the United States. Let's explore their impact on investing in the S&P 500 index. I'm going to look at a little research by Ed Yardini, and we can see here that these stocks were about a trillion dollars amongst all of them. Now, these stocks cumulatively are $10 trillion, so their impact is substantial. We can also see that their share of the S&P 500, that capitalization weighted index, it's gone from 9% to now 26% weight of the index. So if if you're a buy and hold investor and you're, you've got 26% of your exposure in the S&P 500 to these five stocks. It's not such a bad thing, at least it hasn't been, but maybe there's a way we could be more deliberate in our portfolio construction and maybe we could do better or worse. We'll learn from that in just a minute. A few more things on this. From a performance perspective, if you were to take Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, and Microsoft, that's the whole enchilada. If you took that out of the index and made it its own separate index, you can see the contrasting performance here with those stocks providing a cumulative return substantially greater than the index without those stocks. Another way of analyzing this is called a attribution analysis. And here we have some research from the uh, Bank of Montreal from 2020. We can see that in this case, even though we've got 26% weight in the, these stocks are responsible for contributing 41% of the total return of the S&P 500 index. So we say that these stocks are punching above their weight. What got me thinking is what if we could build a core satellite portfolio construction process where we use these new blue chip companies as the core of our portfolio and we gave them a weight that was proportionate to the weight that they've been contributing to the performance of the index, freeing up all the rest of these underperforming assets to go out and, and maybe capture some new ideas optimize the whole enchilada, and let's see how we do. We're gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna head to PortfolioThinkTank.com and click the big red button to design and test our portfolio. And this gives us a, a page, which is our interactive investment policy statement. And we're gonna hit the, the next button to get into the, the portfolio design process. Here, under the first thing that comes up, it's the legacy positions. You can use this to add specific ideas or your existing account. And I'm going to go ahead and use this to put in Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. I'm going to skip Netflix. You can use this system to just put in ideas and it'll tell you if they're warranted for investment. Or you could also force them into the portfolio by defining an allocation share or value. I'm going to do that in this case. And remember, these stocks collectively contributed 41% of that S&P 500 index performance. So in a real 
simple version here, putting uh, an equal weight of 8% into all those and then tossing 1% into cash for good. We've got our 41% in the, in the FANG stocks. And now let's go through and build out the rest of the portfolio, see if we can do a little bit better than the index itself. Here uh, we can set our objectives and this allows the different properties of, the, of those investments to be weighed specific to what you value. And I'm gonna go for total return. I'm gonna dial down income. And if it's in a taxable account, maybe turn that one down. I'm gonna turn diversification up capital preservation consistency up okay and then there's a risk capacity section I'm gonna leave the defaults on that and just skip ahead here this is an all stock uh, portfolio construction process so we're comparing it to a S&P 500 that's an all stock index so we're gonna leave this as all stocks here we could add some investment ideas and I'm just gonna pluck in a few thematic investments. I'm gonna put in maybe freelance, widely held, and biotech. So you can pick whatever you're interested in investing in, change it any. Each one of these has uh, the individual investments underneath, and then based on how those individual investments are scored with prediction systems and how they combine with the rest of your investments and ideas to form a diversified portfolio determines whether they make the grade or they get cut and how much weight they would be into the portfolio. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave these constraints as they are and we'll go ahead and set this thing to optimize every six months and rebalance every three months. And here I'm going to prioritize one, two, three, my different prediction models. And then we'll go ahead and click what you want to have it in terms of execution. And it helps to put in a better account value. In this case, since we've got 41% of that portfolio chewed up already, I wanna make sure I put in a million dollars so it knows to lock in those values. Okay notifications and our benchmark you can customize all this I'm gonna leave all that as it is and I'm gonna set my back test length to be 60 months that is five years that puts it right proportional to the research we were looking at might make for good comparisons there okay and here we go okay this process usually just takes a minute or two to construct the portfolios and it's going to produce back a walk forward out of sample re-optimized back test so it's basically acknowledging that the world changes and the portfolio that's optimized for us today isn't the portfolio that was optimized for us a year ago or what have you but it's going to go back and show you how it would have done it in the past to give you more accurate feedback as to whether the strategy should be invested and here's our results let's check it out the diversification side we've got a pretty decent exposure it's not round like a basketball but if we put our boxes on we can see we've got most of our boxes covered maybe two of them are a little lean but I can live with that in an all equity portfolio and our P&L obviously this looks beautiful beating the index considerably and you can see right underneath that we have our benchmark stats or the return on this strategy this is a uh, uh, an, an annual return, an annual geometric return, 42%, considerably better than the S&P 500, which is the, uh, the benchmark there. So far, so good on the strategy. These numbers look great. Beta, so this basically says that this strategy was up or down about the same amount as the market, but we've managed to pack on 25% alpha. Again, that's annual. That's pretty pretty amazing number there and our up capture down capture looks good always good to see your ups uh, a bigger number than your downs it's very good to see your downs under the, the the market that you were comparing to and you can see we're in the we're right on the cusp there okay we're it, it's scoring us as adequate we're right on the cusp of getting into the green for our, our total diversification 
And again, we've got 41% chewed up in, in five assets. So we knew this was gonna be a bit concentrated of a strategy coming in. I'm okay with this as it is. I'd, I'd really like to see it just a, maybe a splash better, but given the performance that we've seen, let's see how the rest of it checks out. Okay, so here's our uh, individual price charts for the assets and you can see what's what. And here's a rolling chart of those assets. So you can see every six months where those re-optimizations took place, always resetting our FANG stocks back to 8% each. Let's go ahead and, and take a look at what else the optimizer wanted here. In this case, we had 23 investments that were considered for allocation, and the system advised us to invest in these 14 at this time. This is the portfolio to invest in now. And you can always go back under view options and you know see how that would have been at different periods in time. And you can see we've got the FANG stocks always locked in at 8%, which is also good because it's not letting us drift too much. So we're never letting anything become too big of an influence on that portfolio keeping really the emphasis on the strategy and not some individual investments that maybe we get a little bit lucky on. So I'm liking everything I'm seeing so far. And you, you guys can see here the, the names of the companies. In addition to the FANG, we got some of the, the biotech companies, some of the other widely known, widely held investments, making a lot of sense here. And it makes sense that those were rounding out that portfolio. In the uh, correlation matrix, looking good. We got a lot of stuff, blues and greens, wonderful to see. And even our block of FANG stocks, it's not red hot correlations. We're talking about correlations 0 0.6, 0 0.7, which is much better than you know, 0.9s and 0.8s. That non-correlation is what enables the optimization and the rebalancing to provide this gigantic alpha number. Overall, I think this is a, a pretty interesting strategy. I think I might play around with a few variations of this myself for my own account. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a, a link to this strategy in the comments. And if you wanna make one of these for your own, you can go ahead and put a link to the one that you built in the comments as well. To do that, you just click on uh, share a public link and that'll copy a, a link that you could put in in an email or, or, or Facebook or wherever and people could come in and check it out without having to build it or have a login credentials. Pretty happy with the, the way this went down and I think these new blue chip companies in the thing are now in this portfolio process really contributing instead of contributing much more than their fair share against the rest of the S&P 500 index, the system has been able to select other investments that they keep it a little bit more competitive. And that's why the return is so much greater than the benchmark. I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I think this is a green lit for investment capital. Thank you for your time and please consider liking, subscribing. It helps me with YouTube and keeps you update on the uh, new content that we produce. Reviews of different systems, different portfolio construction tricks and best practices. And if you've got an investor in your life that you think could benefit from maybe taking a little bit more of a systematic approach, getting inside some of the analytics and, and thinking more like a uh, portfolio manager instead of a trader, kind of one stock at a time. How does that whole portfolio work together using the power of diversification, which is sometimes feeble, but if you do it right, it can be pretty powerful. And I think we're seeing that here with these giant alpha numbers by uh, using that combination of, of volatility and non-correlation Reoptimizations and rebalancing all ratchet up to create this additive level of performance on top of your portfolio strategy. Thanks for your time. Happy investing.